All right, listen, for the rest of this week, I need you to call me by like a cool name, like what I drink, just like tequila and hard boiled. Mountain Dew. No, I Pepsi. was not. Ew, no. Coca-Cola. Uh, no, not Baja Blast. No, no. Large ice coffee, just a little milk. I don't want to call you that. That's a really long name. No, I, just like Jack Daniels or something. Uh, come right. on, man. All right, I guess. Baja Blast. Baja Blast Bubba. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen. Please notice that exits are conveniently located at the front and rear of this auditorium. When leaving the theater, we suggest that the exit at the front of the auditorium will allow you easier access to the parking areas. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Baja Blast Butler. And I'm Mike Field. And you're listening to Forgotten Cinema. Each episode, we highlight a film that, for a variety of reasons, was forgotten by audiences. Whether it be because a more popular movie was released at the same time, or the film simply didn't catch on with audiences in its initial run. We'll discuss what we loved about the movie, or maybe didn't love about it, but we'll always recommend you revisit it. You never know, you might find your own Forgotten Gem. If you enjoy Forgotten Cinema, we want to hear from you. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We're available on all platforms with a backlog of over 250 episodes for your listening and viewing pleasure. What's going on? Nothing, you know, I just uh, shot up a tea, uh, tea, house. tea shop, tea house, um, got my partner killed, killed another cop in the process, then uh, got really mad that I was yelled at for it, still wanted to investigate the case, found out there was another undercover cop, shot up a warehouse, kept disobeying orders, Slow murdered down. so Slow many people, down. there's a lot of murdering, a lot of, yeah, yeah. and that's why this movie is awesome, <laughs> a cop who loses his partner in a shootout with gun smugglers goes on a mission to catch them, in order to get closer to the leaders of the ring he joins forces with an under, joins forces with an undercover cop who's working as a gangster hitman, they use all means of excessive force to find them. We're doing hard boiled and you better like this damn movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these are going to be the fastest facts you've ever heard of one, because um, I'm going to butcher everyone's name. And I apologize. <laughs> uh, I know. And two, this film has a super limited release domestically here in the States that it's not existing anywhere. Like I can't find, I can give you full numbers on like what it did, but I can't give you, what the weekend it came out, stuff. I can't give you what it went up against because it's just not there. So this is obviously a foreign film. This is a Chinese film, a hard-boiled. A Hong Kong film. Hong Kong film. Excuse me. I apologize. A Hong Kong film. So let me get into it, and then we will just kind of decide for everything else. So hard-boiled has a runtime of 128 minutes. Rated R. Production budget was $4.5 million. Uh, production company was Golden Princess Film Production and Milestone Pictures, and it was distributed by Golden Princess Film Production. And then for U.S. theatrical, I had Rim, whatever that is. I think they released some of these Hong Kong films Rim. overseas. Yeah, so, but I could, I can't tell you. Here's what I have in terms of box office, okay? In Hong Kong, it did 19.7 U.S. million dollars. Um, in the United States, it did, in theatrical, it did $71,000. And in France, it sold 85,000 tickets. I guess, I guess that's how that's they did it back then. It came out in Hong Kong on April 16th, 1992. It had a limited release in the U.S. On, in June of 93, but it premiered in Sundance in January of 93. The English title for this film in Hong Kong was Hot Handed God of Cops. Not Hard Boiled. Wow. <laughs> uh, and it had a wide release in the United Kingdom in October of 1993. So that's kind of its box office. I cannot give you anything. It went up against, obviously, we already talked about that. So let's get into... The people and the cast. I can't wait for this. <laughs> Directed by John Wu. I got that. Uh, <laughs> you probably know John Wu. Uh, American audiences know John Wu from Broken Arrow, Face Off, Mission Impossible 2, and more recently, Silent Night. Have you, did you watch Silent Night? No, because you were not a huge fan. I was not. It was, I, I want classic Wu, and I think classic Wu can never happen again because there are too many limits and restrictions in terms of what you could do in action films now. Did so. you like Paycheck? Because he also did Paycheck. Um, I remember you know liking funny? it, I and do, then I don't remember much of it. I do like some of the action in Paycheck, and I have to go back to it. I didn't hate Paycheck, but I do okay. remember liking it. But I always confuse Paycheck with Payback. So then I always have to like, do you remember Payback with uh, Ma uh, Mel, Gibson? Mel Gibson? He cuts himself through the yeah, trunk. Yeah, but those are two very different movies. They're very different movies, but they have similar names. So that's why so I always, why you, yeah, I always okay. yeah, Payback, Paycheck, you know, that kind of thing. So, anyways, The story for this film was from by John Woo. He's also done and directed. He's also written A Better Tomorrow, The Killer, and Bullet in the Head. A Better Tomorrow, A Better Tomorrow 2, and The Killer came before Hard Boiled. But Hard Boiled was his, it, 
kind of put him and Chow Yun Fat on the American map. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of after this film, he he jumped over to America to make more of his movies because um, I guess the action films, the type of action films that he was doing not really in vogue anymore in, in Hong Kong. It was more like comedies and stuff like that. And that's not what he was into. So right. he moved. Anyways, this film was written by Barry Wong, who's done Fight Back to School and The Killer, both uh, overseas films. Cinematographer was Wing Hong Wong. Uh, eat, your, eat that butler. He's done <laughs> The Forbidden Kingdom, A Better Tomorrow, and The Killer. Uh, composer was Michael Gibbs, who's done the TV show Monsters, uh, the movie Horror, and the 86 film Heat. Not the, obviously, Heat that we all love here in the 90s. And here we go. Edited by Ashik. Did Green Snake and Stoneman, Kit Wakai, who's done Shung King Express and Shaolin Soccer. John Wu also edited this, Bullet in the Head and To Hell with the Devil, he's edited. David Wu, who's done Brotherhood of the Wolf and The Bride with White Hair. Produced by Terrence Chang and Linda Cook, or Cook, excuse me. Uh, Chang has done Paycheck and The Big Hit. And then uh, Cook has done uh, Treasure Hunt and Once a Thief. I talked to Chow Yun Fat. Chow Yun Fat is the lead here. Well, he's the double lead. I should take that back. It's a. Uh, Tony Luing is the second lead, although he he has a he has a uh, an added name now. T Tony Luing Shiwa Shiwa I believe Shiwa yeah. yeah. Uh, so Chai Yun Fat plays Tequila. I'm only going to say Tequila. That's all. I mean, he has a name, but it's like Tequila is the name. They don't even a, list his first name. Yeah. I know. Uh, so well, they say yeah. They say Inspector quote Tequila Tequila Yun. Yeah. yeah. They don't say his first name though. Mm -hmm. I only think they say it once in the movie. They say it a couple times. Do they? Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, The Replacement Killers, and Anna and the King. Uh, Tony Loing is uh, is Alan, who's in Infernal Affairs, which I've never seen. And I want to. I heard that's. I have not watched it either. I've never seen. I've never seen any of them, and I want to watch that. Two, uh, 2046 and In the Mood for Love. Teresa Mo is Teresa, uh, which actually that was originally going to be played by Michelle Yeoh, but she couldn't do it because of scheduling conflicts. Hey. And then they kind of rewrote the character and kind of scaled her back a little bit more because it wasn't a name. Uh, I think because, yeah, I think Michelle Yeoh was going to do it for more stuff. To, yeah, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. Teresa Mo has been in Men Suddenly in Black and in Black, excuse me, and Tomorrow's Another Day. Philip Chan as Superintendent Pang from Supercop and Bloodsport. He, I believe he plays one of the officers in Bloodsport, not one of the fighters. Um, I was wondering why he looked from there. Yeah, but he's not one of the fighters. Yeah, he's just he, like there. Yeah. yeah. Philip Chung Fung Kwok. I think I said that name right. I don't I think, think you're doing pretty good. He plays. I'm pretty impressed. He plays Mad Dog <laughs> from Tomorrow Never Dies and Brotherhood of the Wolf. He, he's the guy with the eye patch in the movie. Anthony Chow Sang Wong as Johnny Wong from The Painted Veil and Infernal Affairs. Hoi San Kwan as Uncle Hoi uh, from Lee Rock and Project Day. Uh, Wei Tong as Foxy from Hero and the Accidental Spy. He's an action director in the Accidental Spy and Hero. So he's, you know, so obviously he's in this, but he's obviously doing stunts. And then John Woo's in it really quick. He plays Mr. Wu for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> under uh, Chow Yun Fat's actually insist not insistence but suggestion to do some scenes with Mr. Wu and John Wu to play him so that he could have some, a, a more of a emotional connection within the movie. And he did that so that he knew that John Wu wouldn't cut his own scenes from the film, so we'd have him in there. Good job. <laughs> All right, woof! I got through that. Awesome. All right, so Butler, I know how I think of this film. I don't know if you want me to go first. You're more than welcome to go. Uh, well, because you thoughts. have, I guess you have more connection. So sure, why don't you go? All right. So this film obviously came out when I was uh, first starting to appreciate film and first starting to appreciate indie film. And it there was I've seen The Killer, I've seen A Better Tomorrow. Uh, not this was the I believe this is the first John Woo film I saw, and then I went back and watched the other ones. Right. So when this for, when this came out, I loved this movie when it came out. I love the action. I love just the near the, the the sheer destruction of scenes, like the action scenes kept going and kept happening. Yes, they're all jumping and diving in the air. They're making a ridiculous uh, moves when they're getting hit. I mean, they're jumping before they get hit into the glass. <laughs> um, but I really, I mean, I loved everything. I loved everything about this movie. I love my, one of my, I always talk about this. And one of my favorite moments of the movie is when they, the two guys are fighting um, and they put their guns down and they have all the people that there's all these like patients in there. And they're like the, the two gunfighters aren't, they don't want to fight. They want them to leave. Like, get out, get out. And the pack guy comes in, just mows them all down anyways. I'm just like, <laughs> Oh God. And people are like, ah! Like the whole idea that these guys just kill the innocent. So that's, that's, we got to just do it. Just kill them all. I'm like, Oh my God. So just back then you're just kind of like, well, it was something you never saw before. Um, and this is going to sound weird, but like the action, be because of the way the action was done, it was almost like, not that I could do that as a filmmaker or, or it was attainable, but it felt, I felt very 
close to it because I'm like, I can see how this could be fun to do and how it could be because they were obviously making it up as they go a little bit. That's how they do the, the action sure, scenes, yeah. how it works. And it just felt like, like, wow, that's it just it looked like a film that would have been awesome to be part of because you're just I mean, what dudes don't like pretending what dudes don't like pretending to be in a gunfight and, oh, and you know, have, all that yeah. stuff. So I think that's what kind of why I loved it back then watching it now. I still love it. I still love the action. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you about plot. I don't care. That's not why I watch this film. That's not why I love that film. I love this film for the 20 minute action scene. I love this film for the hallway scene when they go into the elevator to go down to the other floor and it takes the crew 20 seconds to clear off the floor so that it can look like a new floor. I, that's why I like this movie quite a bit. Um, but go ahead and crap all over it. It's fine. This movie is not <laughs> like, I don't know if it, no, I, uh, when it started, I, I thought I'd seen hard boiled, but I think I saw the killer. You might have. Cause the killer is more of his, is, yeah. is better tomorrow. A killer or what he's kind of, they're, they're better movies a little better than hard boiled in terms of, the emotional aspect. Sure. But hard boiled is what people were like, it was such a huge was success stuff, yeah. overseas. Yeah. So I had thought I had seen this movie and it turns out I didn't know what I was talking about. Cause as soon as I saw the poster, he's holding the baby. I'm like, I don't remember that. That poster stinks by the way. That's the DVD poster. The original poster oh, so, was on the side like this. Yeah. That's the original poster. The poster is really weird. But I was like, when I saw the poster, I'm like, I don't remember seeing no baby. So I think I saw the killer. Uh, so when I was watching this, I'm like, I don't know this movie at all. <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't very impressed with the tea house scene. So the tea house scene started, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. This just seems like, like you said, jumping, like before the bullets hit and, yeah. and rolling for no reason, people getting shot at it. It's just like, oh, it's like he, he rolls in the flower. I was oh. just like, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to like this. <laughs> uh, but then it kept going. And the other action scenes I thought were much better. Like. I think what sold me on the movie, once I knew I was, I liked this movie, well, I, A, I do like that he's a jazz musician. When that starts, it's so corny. And so like- He's not playing that clarinet, it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it, it so clearly takes the piss out of all the action movies that I'm sure he, that John Woo had grown up with from old Hollywood, like the 80s, 70s and 80s. It's just like, I really like the homages basically to all that. He just takes all the cliches. So I'm not going to rip on the story. The story is <laughs> awful, but it's clearly, it's almost like a spoof in and of itself. It just- hits all the cliches just right or just wrong, depending on how you look at it. But what sold me on the movie was the warehouse scene, the warehouse action scene when the motorcycle dives into the back of the truck and takes one of the guys out and pins him to the wall. <laughs> I was like, I literally like I'm watching the movie by myself and I go, Oh, and I like never react like that. When I watch a movie by myself, I was like, Oh my God. I like I wrote the note. I was like, I rewound it. I watched it like three times. The motorcycle hitting the guy I was like, that's, awesome <laughs> so from then on in i was like all right the action's clearly getting better and uh like he's just like it's like a video game he's just taking the people out no one else is there it's so ridiculous right. um that i was sold on it and like you said the 20 minute action scene at the end is great and the hallway scene is just incredibly incredibly uh impressive and i think only cuts because there was probably a mistake no at the very end the, the note i had was he had a cut because they didn't have enough money to do to the whole thing on one again. ticket that 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 shot took i'm trying to find the note here that shot took uh, a day and a half to set up and the crew had to sit in one little room and watch all the action on monitors and they couldn't use steady cams because they were too heavy so they had to go handheld cameras and they had to splice two takes together because they didn't have enough money for one take but like i talked about like they get into the elevator the other video goes down and it's the same. It's, it's the same, it's hallway. same hallway. I had to, I rewound it and watched yeah. it twice. Cause like, did they clear they that had set? To, they had like, yeah, they had did to go out 20 put seconds. New windows up. Yeah. Cause they shot all the windows. Out. They were given 20 seconds to clean and change the set outside the elevator door so that it looked, it looked like a different floor. It's crazy. Like, see, impressive. See, that's the, that's the note. That's the stuff that gets me all fired up in terms of filmmaking, because that like, when you do that, you, you the euphoria, the joy that that crew and that cast must have felt when they got that shot what is phenomenal. Like that's, I mean, when I did, when I did my stuff and we do shorts and we do a feature and we do something, we pull off, we try something at, you know, a little different out of the ordinary, yeah, right. a little harder. Yeah. And when it's done, you're completing it at the end of the day and you're exhausted. There is such a feeling of just accomplishment because you did something that you didn't think you could do. And that happens almost daily. You, if you're, if you're, if you're doing it the right way, that happens almost daily and weekly on a film set. And and that's when you're 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 all working together as one. 
So the fact that they got this done is such a testament to that entire crew, how John Woo works, and just this movie in and of itself. And so I love that note. That's what, yeah. Yeah, it's not even just action. Like, there's actual dialogue in there. There's the whole, yeah. like, oh, I shot a cop. Oh, I didn't shoot a cop. You didn't shoot the cop. And then, yeah. like. You tell you, him, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. And then he goes, you shot the cop. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm like, why would you just tell him how? Because you said you shot a cop before. Yeah. Like, I just thought, like, that's, like, awesome that they were able to get hit those story beats and that emo the emotional beats there. And I think that I know that this is kind of Chow Young Fat's like big movie that yes. got him over to the seas. But Tony Leung, like he's really good. He is. I I'm surprised he didn't come over and do more. He's more of a dramatic actor, I believe. And he so, is. Because like he's big in, in Infernal Affairs. That's a, a, his big film. One of his big yeah. films. But he's got a lot of his bigger films are more drama, uh, more like romance and stuff like that. And plus, maybe he just didn't want to. He wanted to stay, to stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. Was, and I get that. Um, you talked about the tea house scene. The tea house was shot before they even had the script done. They did the whole sequence because the tea house was demolished five days after they did it. So they basically so, were like going to destroy the tea house. So they basically were like, okay, let's shoot it up. They had a chance to do right. something. So and, they took the and chance. And the original script actually had a different. So, uh, Alan, the Tony Lung character was initially going to be the bad guy. And he, he was going to be, so his, his thing was he was poisoning so why they had the hospital at the end, he was poisoning mm -hmm. baby formula. At, and yeah. Oh my and John God. Was like, John Woo was like, no, we're not doing that. Like, we can't do this. <laughs> and so they rewrote everything uh, one week before the movie. And that's kind of where you got the, oh no, he's really a cop. And they, they made things work. So that's what they used. They did the TL scene before all that and they shot it. And they had complaints from the neighbors saying like, oh, hey, you know, they kept calling every night. They kept doing the like, Yo, Yeah, they're like, you know, they're shooting up everything. It's really a lot. And they wouldn't stop them because they liked they were fans of John Wood. They're like, no, finish. <laughs> Go ahead. That's awesome. Um, but I, in that scene, I there's two, there's two things in that scene I really love. I, all three things. I love when he spits the, he's got the flower on his face and he spits the, um, the bullet. toothpick out and he shoots him. Oh, yeah. I yep, love yep. that. Um, I love the stairway slide. Which they came up with on the set. I love that it's slide. So I can't tell awesome. what he's doing. He's running though. down. On the, is he running? And then he's using the slide to just yeah, avoid the people. He's right. Okay. And he's running down and he just shoot. I, I love that. I also love that. That was the first time I was like, this is a, this is definitely a John Woo movie. <laughs> but like, I also love the fact that the bad guys are running down the stairs and they're just shooting people to get it out of their way. Well, I have never seen so many innocent victims. <laughs> I love it. Shoot so out in bad any movie. that I love it, but it's just, but but it's like there's no mistaking that these guys are the bad guys like all the time, even the hospital right. stuff. But it's just like, oh, get out of the way, boop. Oh my god! <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, oh, I love this movie. Go go go! Keep going, keep going. I was just, I was loving it. The only thing I don't like, which I don't remember seeing in most John Woo movies, is it's like obviously you want a gunfight to last longer. They so clearly purposely shoot at people's feet, mm -hmm. but I'm like, can you shoot straight? Can you shoot across? They always go from the bottom up. Just. Just at least go across and have the guy just run this way. Cause it's like, why are you starting at the feet? And the amount of kidney shots. Did you notice that? Yeah. yeah. They're all they're no hearts, no heads. Well, mm -hmm. there's a couple of headshots, but they're just shooting kidneys well, left and right. It's all scripts going yeah. off. It's they're all, shooting yeah. kidneys left and right in this and, movie. And like when like if I'm running across this desk, like the entire desk is being destroyed and below. Like the the fact that well, like they just like when they're on that boat, they destroy that boat. Oh my god, they do. So there's they like wherever they are and wherever there's gonna be action, that thing is getting messed up. And the squibs are really filled with blood. Cause like right. when when Alan gets hit with the shrapnel from the shotgun yeah. and it rips through his back, I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. Like I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Did you see the note about the warehouse scene with the explosions? No. So I guess um let me bring up the note. Cause it's it's actually kind of a fun note. So I guess uh during the filming in the scene when he's running down. Oh, it's the hallway with the baby in his arms. So it's at the oh, very yes. end. Yes. And I guess John Woo wasn't happy with the first take with the explosions because they were too far behind. So he took control of the explosions and he made them like super close to Chow and Fat. So he runs and he's getting shot at and he's like really running for his life. And he's like, all right, did we get the take? Let's check it out. And he's like all calm. It was that mother. <laughs> <at the end. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was that's a, but but that that scene you're like, oh yeah, right. like it's him. It's him running, which is great. When he goes down the the wire and the wire's like too long clearly and he mm -hmm. just hits the ground. Oh, I know. I was like, he really hit the ground after falling yeah. two stories. That didn't help him at all. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I know, know if that was him or a stunt double, but I was like, that did not feel good when they hit him. How, how about the fact that it's so ridiculous that the fact that when uh at the end of the film, like they're trying to get all the babies out, and every time they're going down the side of the room, the, the, 
this one guy in the window shooting like a drive through busts out and like it's just shooting at him like man they really don't want the babies to leave (laughs) (laughs) and like i'm like I don't think of myself. It's got to be the same dude just over and over. Just like they keep killing him. Put on an orange jacket this time. Yeah. I right, put on a blue jacket. Yeah. This time. It's just ridiculous. I'm just, I, it's especially when you don't like that in the hospital scene when he was, he's like, I'll kill the innocents. You don't really kind of, you don't really kind of understand it until they get to the courtyard and they and they're killing are killing opening everybody. fire on everybody. And you're like, Oh my God. I love it. Oh God. I love this film. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a bad guy that your main bad guy, your like Jaws type character in the movie's like, dude, stop. Oh, stop killing yeah. all the guys. Yeah, he's it's funny. Even Mad they Dog's like, no. Yeah, they never really kind of go into they never trust Alan. He's always trying to prove himself to these bad guys because he, you know, he's the underboss and he take out the big boss. And then they he's always trying to prove him a proof to the prove himself to this guy. They always think right. he's a cop. And the uh mad dog. He has that comment where he's like, he doesn't like people that are not loyal because he views what he did as disloyal when he killed when he killed Uncle. Yeah. 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 So he always had it out for him. And even then he's like, you know, he he still has a code. And, and, you know, he's like, I understand you don't like cops, but you don't have to kill all the doctors, the patients. I'm killing everybody. (laughs) Yeah. And then he and then when he gives him he gives the guy when they're in the control room, this is the main uh, the main guy, um, Johnny. Yeah. They're in the control room. And he just gives them like these giant packs of C4. <laughs> and he's like, put these around that everywhere. But I'm like, so the, you're just going to blow everything up. Sure, boss. Absolutely, boss. <laughs> we got it. To give you an idea of John Woo's style, let me give you this quote. Logic is very boring. And how he, this is how he talks about how he crafts characters and scenes. When I'm shooting, I do what I feel. I'm free and open. He also has no love for film theory or proper film language. Instead, simply uses what he wants. Awesome. <laughs> That's almost on par with uh, the say, like the Spielberg line where he talks about, I don't care if you know what, what camera, I don't care if you know like what new camera you're using or anything like that. If you know how to block, if you know how to frame and tell a story, not to frame, but if you know how to tell a story, that's all you need. Right. Yeah. And that's what John Woo was saying here. He know he has a better grasp of storytelling. Um, and it, it's a different style. It's absolutely a different style, but he knows like his, he knows his, he knows his lane. He knows what he wants right. and he knows what he can do. Right. And that's why I think that a lot of like later, like face off is great. Uh, Broken Arrow has moments. Um, Mission Impossible 2 is very stylized. It's got moments as well. Like So his American movies are not bad. They're not, I mean, as great so as. Face off is very similar in style to this where it's right. just kind of like so much ridiculousness. But that's kind of like the world that it, it creates this world. Right. That's definitely supposed to be higher than. And he's supposed to be doing face off too, which I can't wait for. <laughs> but that, but see, that's what I'm saying. I think like now though, I, I, I think it's very difficult to do action films now. I mean, granted for the safety measures and for making sure, you know, obviously there's, there's like a big thing where like they don't want to fire weapons. It takes like a week or three weeks to, you know, get approval to get the weapons fired on the set. It's not, it's not very, it's not easy. Right. Um, and to do all that stuff. And a lot of times, even with John Wick, like you, I think a lot of those muzzle flashes are, in post-production. I think you're going to see more yeah. and more of that, but that's right. fine. But see, but that's what I'm saying. Like when <clears> I watch a movie like hard boiled, like it's visceral, it's there. And I'm not saying I'm not advocating for people to be unsafe, <laughs> but what I'm advocating for is the realistic nature of what I'm watching. Well, I don't know if it's realistic that I have any ammo and those bullets sound, sound like laser guns, but yes, I, I understand care. what you're saying. I don't, but care. I think what John, Woo, even though they're using obviously the blanks, I don't think that's the visceral part of it. I think the visceral part is the squib work, sure, which is very impressive. And, the destruction of sets. That's what I'm talking about. Is, I'm talking about when they're rolling out and the things are getting exactly. Blown up. Yeah. Timing. So it doesn't matter if the guns are real or not. What matters is putting those devices yeah. and and getting that wood shards and then blowing out the sure. fake glass. Like, I think it's all together. Mess, That's your, all. mess your sets up, man. Oh yeah. It's well, all well. Yeah. You can't mess it up with on stagecraft. Well, obviously we both love John the John Wick films. Yes. But I think a lot of other action films uh, these days, which like you said, there aren't that many lately, are are very clean. And yeah, that's kind of like, like the thing. Yeah. You didn't see the Fall Guy. I, I've seen no, the Fall Guy, yeah, um, and the Fall Guy has got really nice action, uh, really nice stunt work. Um, but like, but but even that movie is very clean. It's a very clean action film in terms of the stunt work, and and there's moments where people are you know busting through glass and stuff like that. But like, it all seems very planned yeah, and kind of like right. Yes, it's all very situated. Like w- when I think of like hard boiled, I think like it must take them a week to clean up the set after this. Yeah, it should be like 
this set is made to break. So let's figure Destroy it out it. right now. Yeah. On to like kind of like when we talked about, and it's part of our lead up series. I'm pumping the Patreon now, I guess. Uh, <laughs> when we're talking about Roadhouse and the end of the original Roadhouse, where it's Patrick Swayze and the other guy, actor whose name I forget, which I'm bad with names. They rehearsed that fight scene that they did on the and the lake. Oh, and the, okay, yep, yep. And then they they did it, and it's visceral and it's real. And I, obviously, Swayze messed up his uh, elbow because they didn't realize one of the sticks was real. But they just used what was around, and I think that helps your set is being like figuring out in the moment. Yes, being like this glass isn't going to hurt you. It's breakable glass. This wood is made to splinter. It's, that takes you. Yeah. Let's let's make something awesome here. That takes you back to when you are growing up and making films. And you're like, what can we do? What do we have? Like that takes you back to that because that's almost the making, telling stories and filmmaking at its purest form is when you're just sitting around with a bunch of friends trying to do something. Yeah. To be fair, for the new Roadhouse, they destroy the entire set at the, at the end of that film. They, they do, so, but yeah. it seemed like it seems planned out. Sure, but so they do do it. it. They yeah. do destroy it. It is ripped up and torn up, and they just you know, that, granted, there's a boat that goes through it and all that stuff. And that then, kind of stuff needs to yeah. happen. Yeah, the car goes through the front. So yeah, no, I think that's definitely you. You want. And an action, I think a, a a really solid action film is when you go in and you, and you have your big set at the end of that at the end of that movie. That set is destroyed. Yeah. So I think that's what you really want. Supremacy did that. Born Supremacy yep. did that uh, really well with the uh, the cabin. The, well, the cabin and identity. You talk no, about and so, and, oh, so I'm thinking of I'm thinking of legacy. Yeah, in in Supremacy when he goes Denmark or Germany or whatever. Yeah. And there's the agent and he's like puts his stuff down and he's like making tea and they mess up his like kitchen. It's like that really nice condo. Okay. Oh, you're talking about when he's jumping. No, the second one was when he's, when they fight in the rooms, right? When they jump through the window, they're jumping on that's the roof. That's Morocco. Kind of. That's, that is the but second that's one. Another that's one another one. Yeah. He messes. Yeah. They messes that place. Yeah. Up. Did you ever play the sequel to this? So it's a video game. I played the demo for the sequel to this, but so, as I was watching this movie, I'm like, I should have bought that game. I was, <laughs> I, I actually was like, I never realized that. So the video game is called Strangle. It came out in 2007, PS3 and other, uh, other, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Systems. Uh, systems, yeah. And uh, consoles. I was looking for the term consoles. Oh, okay. I was looking for the term consoles, brother. <laughs> uh, so anyways, it's basically a sequel to this film. It's uh, tequila look, going across the, con uh, the nation, not the nation, the world looking for his long lost daughter was kidnapped or something like that. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, I started looking, I go, can I play this now somewhere? Like I really just wanted to, because I, there was a third person shooter and I was like, damn it. You but go slow, you go slow-mo mode too. That's fine. Oh, all the sets. My favorite part of the matrix game. All the, uh, <laughs> all the settings explode just yeah. like that. The bullet it's like, I remember the demo. I was like, wow, this is really impressive. And I never <laughs> got it. I don't know why. <laughs> so this is your first, um, foreign John Woo film. Is the killer not foreign? No, it is. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's right. You yeah. said you saw the killer, but uh, that was probably, it, though, right? The killer was probably the one I saw. Yeah. Okay. You never John Woo, foreign John Woo film? Yes. Foreign, never seen a better tomorrow. No, I didn't like in like well, internal affairs is um just Tony Brown. It's not John Woo, right? Uh, but I do want to watch those. Infernal. Those, yes, you're right. Yeah. Infernal, yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I've not watched any of the other ones. You that said that of. you said John Woo was talking about doing what movie? Face Off too. See, He's actually, I don't, I think he's in post-production for, I think they remade The Killer in a, in a, uh, in an American movie. Ooh. So I think that's his next film. I'm okay with that. <laughs> so just heads up there. It says 2024 that it's supposed to be coming out this year. So Listen, all right. When it comes out, <clears throat> I'll watch it with my Schweppes, uh, ginger ale and a, uh, or Not club soda. Ale, club soda and tequila, and tequila. And slam it down. Then take my little flimsy coaster and slam <laughs> it down. And for some reason, not have my buddy tell me, yo, well, you got this mess all over my bar. <laughs> Cause that goes there. everywhere. And so I've never seen someone make a drink. <laughs> that's come that, that drink that tequila is drinking comes from, uh, Wu recalling drinking tequila in Hong Kong and adding soda and covering with an napkin. He slams the glass down and stirs the bubbles. And he's like, quote, it would make you feel cool. Feel like a man. So I guess that's why they did it. I mean, it does like, it does look fun to do, but <laughs> the, the bubbles mix the drink itself. That's, he, you don't need to do. That. But then he has something, he has some, uh, tequila or Chow Yun Fat when they're in the, uh, police station, has some kind of drink. He must put, it must be bromide, bromide or something or Alka-Seltzer because he pours it into the glass and he chugs the glass. Do you remember that when he's I reading the newspaper? I don't remember so that. He, so before the scene him starts, the newspaper. right, so before that scene starts, the other guys are chatting and he like pours something in there and it fizzes up and he's like, whoosh, he downs it and he's like, he's like trying not to burp, burp and then the scene <laughs> starts. I'm like, oh my gosh, he really drowned that. <laughs> So, let me give you a review. You ready? 
I'm ready. A review in Newsday stated that, quote, mayhem has never looked better than in a John Woo's latest high caliber cops and robbers thriller, even if the plot is a bit slippery. And Woo, and that Woo quote has blasted the action genre onto a whole new level. His shootouts are, ba- are a ballet, his firebombings are poetry, and while he lets the body count get away from him, he constantly fascinates <laughs> through a combination of chaos and excruciating control over what we're allowed to see. Wait a minute. I mean, yeah, I yeah. guess so. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably not going to agree with this. Mark Salisbury of the Empire Ma- of Empire Magazine called it, quote, infinitely more exciting than a dozen diehards. Action cinema doesn't come any better than this. No. I knew you wouldn't like that. No. no. This movie only happened because Die Hard is, this, this is, Die Hard's one of the movies this is like clearly like inspired by. Yeah. Like, uh, one like of my notes. Cop. Come on. To that point, because you were talking about it before. One of my notes is that this definitely, this is definitely heavily influenced by action movies that I grew up loving. The score. And the mood is basically on par with that. The, definitely the score. Um, you could definitely, it's like Lethal Weapon-like, yep. uh, Die Hard-like, not even like, it's just early 90s, late 80s, early 80s uh, action. You know, the action scenes never stop, which is another thing I like. Um, so it's definitely uh, influenced by that genre. And I think he does ratchet it up and take it to, uh, uh, he just keeps going. Just keep, like even that warehouse scene. Yeah, you know, the warehouse scene. Is the warehouse scene, just people keep coming in from out of nowhere. Like, where did these guys come from? And why didn't the first batch of guys have guns yeah. like these second? And the guys? fact that Tequila, Chow Yun Fat's character, goes in solo, <laughs> just goes in by himself and just starts blowing. And one of my notes is like, uh, my, my first note is, uh, we don't need to reload these guns, get used to it and move on. Yeah. <laughs> He comes down the rope line and instead of just killing the one guy coming down the rope line, they're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> what's the what's the line they say they call? I have it. Hold on. What do they, they they say about him? Oh, give a guy a gun. He thinks he's Superman. Give him two and he thinks he's God. And that's what he's talking about with tequila. And it's like that's it's ridiculous. I didn't even want to be a cop. I just one line I do like is when he goes, I didn't want to be a cop. I just wanted to be a musician. Life should be about f- having fun. And I was like. That's actually a good line. Like <laughs> How about when, because uh, it's very difficult because they say this in the movie that you don't know which, it's the triad gang. You don't know which tri- if a triad is a cop, or which cop is a triad because they have so many. Oh yeah, because at the end they're just killing each right. other like left and right. So when they're in the hospital scene, you don't know who's who. But the one guy that slaps Teresa, she has the gun oh, on yeah. him, and he slaps her, and she's just like, she just shoots him, and he's like <laughs> shocked that she shot him. That he, I was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Maybe you should have slapped her. <laughs> Are you recommending this to anybody you know? Uh, like, a baby puts out a guy's legs on fire by pissing on him. I'm recommending this movie to everyone <laughs> uh if you like action movies this is i don't understand why you wouldn't watch this movie like i said i wasn't a huge fan of the 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 tea store tea shop tea house tea house i don't know i keep getting that wrong the tea house shoot up i felt it was a little like discombobulated but everything else is just awesome and the story the story is also stupid <laughs> but the relation i like alan being undercover i like that whole like he has to do some extreme stuff. Like the very first scene he's in, he shoots a guy in the head in the library. Like he's I know. in, he's like hardcore in. And I think that's really cool. The action scenes are awesome. The body count is huge. If you're into that the, with movies, the body count on this, uh, and then just somebody have a 307. Number? That's it. I mean, yeah, I think it'd be more. I know. Cause that, so in, in to that point, I'll let you finish. Alan tells um, Tequila that he's like, what's with Tequila's like, what's with the, oh, the uh, cranes, the cranes, the paper cranes. I, I make one for every person I kill. My note at the end of the movie is like, you got a lot of paper cranes to make, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When he's dumping them one by one on the boat, which the is end, littering. It should yes. be, it should be a garbage, yeah. a whole garbage. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I mean, and John Wu clearly has inspired a lot of Hollywood filmmakers after that. I think it's, it's hard pressed for me not to recommend, like if you like at 90s action movies, like this is really well done. It's easy to follow the, the confusing plot. It's it, it's pretty easy to follow. It's not like oh, I'm going to be watching subtitles the whole time. No, you're going to be watching awesome shootouts the whole time. Um, I think it's unless you don't like action. That's the only reason I wouldn't recommend this to somebody. I think action movies are are kind of a, a lost genre right now. I think we have some, but I, I think we didn't realize how good we had it from yeah. maybe the early to mid 80s to 
maybe end of 99, maybe even a little into the early 2000s. I think that's we had there was probably like four, 15 to 20 years of just good action films, just action films yeah. that not necessarily, you know, not necessarily like the plot or not necessarily like character work. Like, yeah, some of that, some of that's great. Some of it's not so good. But I think like with the exception of and I know Mike doesn't like Dead Reckoning, but with the exception of the Mission Impossible films, minus that, there's not really a lot of really a lot of action. I mean, we also named John Wick. No, I get it. But, but, yeah, see, but, yeah, but when like John Wick came out, when John Wick first came out, it was such a success. And then all of a sudden, all the John Wick clones came and all. And I think that's yeah. great. I, I But I, I, I don't think we're quite yet where we were when like, you know, when you have. Oh, the, no, I yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah, there's only a handful. James Bond's once every like 10 years at yeah. this point. Like very so. So I think for somebody who loves action, I think. I think if you love action films, you have to watch John Woo movies. I, I really. If you're somebody who is like, I love action movies, I love Lethal Weapon, I love the Dards, I love, even even new people now, I love John Wicks. I love like somebody tells me they love John Wick, I'm gonna tell them go watch A Better Tomorrow, The Killer, and Hard Boiled from John Woo. And don't watch dubbed, watch it subtitled, and maybe even watch A Better Tomorrow too. But go watch those films because if you love John Wick, you will love those movies. Well, those and, are heavily influenced right, by exactly. Yeah. And like those, like that's that's how good this movie, that's how good those films are. That's how good of early John Woo is. Uh, I think now he's just kind of older, but I, I think he's hampered by a lot of things he can't do. I mean, but if I, I can't stress enough how how awesome I love, how awesome I feel Hard Boiled <laughs> is and how much of an experience it is. Like I remember watching Hard Boiled. I think I saw it a couple of times. I remember watching it with friends and we were loving it. And we were like laughing. We're like, oh my God, that's awesome. Like that's how <laughs> that's, it was such a visceral film for me. And I hope it is for somebody else. Um, but like, it's such a solid action film that if you, again, if you love action films, you have to watch these movies from John Woo, not just Hardboiled. You must watch them because you will be like, because you will see like, like Mike says, if you like John Wick, you will watch those movies and be like, this is, this, this feels like an extension of those. This is where, yeah, that's right. where they got it from. Yeah. But Mike, why are we saying it's forgotten? Yeah, it's early 90s. Uh, it's a foreign film. I think that's a big part of it. That's definitely going to keep people away. I think. You say, watch a John Woo movie. He's also an American director. So you're going to be like, okay. So you're going to go back. You'll watch Face, Face Off. Off you'll watch Arrow, yep. Broken Arrow. You'll watch all the, like, maybe Paycheck. Like, the bigger ones he's done. And I don't think you'll go back and watch, like, some of the big Hong Kong ones he made, which are are are, are big films. And they inspired a lot of people. It, a, it got Hollywood to say, come over here and make some movies. So that's a big deal. Which, which again, I, don't, I'm, I keep cutting you that's off. That's fine. Which goes to show you that they're always looking for something that's different. Like there's always something that hits that Hollywood hasn't even thought of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they they have their formulas that they put in. And now they have their AI plot device chat bots that tell them what's good. And they good. But like they really don't know what people sometimes what audiences want. And when movies like this movie comes out or a lot of foreign stuff comes out that really hits. Because the audience doesn't know. Yeah. What they and they're want. like, hey, we want that here. It's like, it just goes to show you just, just do what you love and do what movies you like. Like, John Woo does what he feels is right and what he wants to do. And that's what gets him where he goes. But go ahead, continue your story. I don't even remember what it was. No, there you go. Oh, why, it was it. why it was uh, forgotten. Yeah. I think that those are the reasons. I think that when you do say, hey, you should go back and watch some Hong Kong or, or some of those more. Um, Eastern movies, you, a lot of them focus on the martial arts. Yeah, you're right. And so they'll go and watch, you know, a Jet Li movie or, um, oh, what's his face? Danny something, the, the Ip Man movies. A lot of the martial arts based ones and not so much John Woo's like more the gun focused movies. Yeah, like the, the hardcore, like more action movie kind of focus. And I think that that's kind of a shame is because that's where your mind goes. And that doesn't go to the fact that John Woo in the 90s made some great, like, Hollywood action, like Hollywood type action movies that you should go back and see. But we're saying you should. <laughs> but I think that's why it was forgotten. Yeah. And that it didn't get a wider release in the US. Like Hollywood was like, hey, come over here and make movies. But they should have been also like, hey, can we release this? You were thinking of Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen. Yeah. Not Danny. Donnie. All right. No worries. That's right. Yeah. I think uh, I, there's a real, I mean, I've had conversations with people. I'm like, oh, you should watch this film. Like, it's a subtitle. I'm like, yeah. Ugh, no thanks. I mean, I get it. Uh, actually, I don't get it. I mean, it's, if you, I mean, just read the subtitles, it's fine, you know. But you know, I don't think you need the subtitles in this. Is you need for some stuff, but you're watching the action half the time. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a read the entire movie kind of right. movie. So, um, 
I always prefer subtitles over dubbed because the dub just makes it, it takes you out and it makes it seem stupid. I like dubbed when it's the original actors just doing different no, language. I don't want the dub. I want, I want, I want it what it's originally supposed to be. That that's, I'm not, I'm not purist. I just want to watch the film the way it was made. <laughs> Sounds kind of, what's wrong with that? Whoa, whoa, before it's like you were, you were, you were saying that like there was something wrong with that. I don't, I just don't, I, I have don't. no opinion either way. <laughs> I respect people. I respect, you know, people not wanting to read. Okay, good for you. I just don't can't do that. So that's just how I roll. So sorry. Watch it with the subtitle. But anyways, <laughs> um, I think that's part of it. Why it's forgotten. I think it's, it's such a limited release. And and when it came out, like it wasn't like we could just go down to the local theater and watch it. We had to get it on DVD. And it, I want to say we had to get like a region free or something like that. Like I want to say it was tough to get. Um, which even made it more exciting to watch the film. So, um, so yeah. So, I got nothing else to say. I had nothing but good things to say about Hard Boiled. And uh, after this episode, after this episode is out now, and you're watching and listening, if you want to reach out to me about it, please feel free because I love this film and I will always talk about this movie because it is such a great action film. It's one of my favorites. Butler, where can they find it? If you want to talk to Field about action movies, you can do it on Discord. <laughs> uh, we have a Discord. It's part of our Patreon. You sign up for Patreon. It's free. To sign up and get access to the Discord where you can talk to Field about all these different genre <laughs> movies. I uh, actually am going to go back and watch The Killer on Better Tomorrow. If I, I do kind of want to rewatch The yeah. Killer now because I'm like, there were so many scenes that I'm like, why is this yeah. not happening? I think I'm going to go back and watch. And I want to watch <laughs> Infernal Affairs too, so I got to do that. Looks like I'm going on a Hong Kong uh, action movie kick. <laughs> Uh, so go on Patreon. You can join us there. If you want to support the show, we have paid tiers as well, where you get exclusive episodes like our lead up series, where I talked about Roadhouse before. We're doing the Alien series, which I think at this point is done. Um, when we're recording this so you can go back and check out all our different aliens movies ghostbusters uh lead up planet of the apes lead up we had a we have a bunch of episodes on our patreon that are exclusive to patreon and uh find us all over the socials and wherever you're watching or listening to this do us a favor like rate subscribe um obviously signing up for patreon helps but also your viewing and your your interaction with the platform of your choice helps us a lot as well liking rating subscribing and uh, thank you for our Patreons that are our current Patreons. We couldn't do this show without you. And join us next week as we are going to watch Nick Cage steal cars so the bad guys don't kill his brother. We're watching. I'm going in 60 seconds. That's right. I'm going to keep doing that joke the entire episode. So enjoy <laughs> that. It's never going to get old. Well, let's go. All right. So that's next week. Gone in 60 seconds. Uh, that's it. Go watch Hard Boiled. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'm Mike Field. I'm Mike Butler. And this has been Forgotten Cinema. <laughs>